Jersey City officials have announced that they'll be making a $6.7 million upgrade to the Newark Avenue pedestrian plaza. And this next home security video will shock you. It shows a 14 year old stealing a car at gunpoint and beating up the owner. Jimmy, the program dives into activities that are better in bed, such as binge watching, reading, typing, and of course, eating. There's good luck, and then there's great luck. A Richmond woman hit the Virginia lottery 30 times in a single drawing. A special annual event taking place this morning in Ocean City with a special guest speaker. WBOC's Bill Mitch has more from Ocean City. And Instagram is trying out a new idea which you may or may not like. The photo sharing app owned by Facebook is testing a feature that hides the total amount of likes on photos and videos. Now it's unclear what led up to the shootings as investigations are still ongoing. He is a rescued 10 year old Italian Greyhound and Jackie, I've met a lot of dogs in my day. I have one of my own, but I have never met a dog that's so loving and so calm. Can you tell me how to get to Sesame Street? Yeah. Oh, I, I did it. it. I like it. <laughs> New York Mayor Bill de Blasio now knows the answer to that question and it's a resounding yes. One adult female, the mother of the children, as well as a six year old boy were able to escape. Typically on a day like this, you'd expect to see people enjoying lunch out on a terrace or at a coffee shop. Now this is what the outside of the cafe looks like right now. Gianna tells me that this is just the beginning of her journey. She hopes to continue sharing her story. Additionally, Dr. Phillips says he's also pursuing legal action. A little over four years ago, Gianna Graw lost her father to cancer. He was everything to me, my inspiration in life, just so wonderful, kind, caring, compassionate. I can't say enough amazing things about him. Her father, Willie Graw, was a Jersey City police officer, a man Gianna says dedicated his life to helping others. Oh my gosh, it was so difficult. Um, and it was like, how could this happen to someone so good? You know, it's hard to wrap your head around. But instead of blaming the universe for what it took from her, she decided to give back. I just wanted to honor his life and who he was, and I just thought saving a life would be the perfect way to do it. Her first attempt at saving a life was when she read a news article about a Jersey City police officer who needed a kidney. She contacted his hospital, but he had already found one. But I was still happy and willing to donate to a stranger. It didn't have to go to him. I was happy to just help anyone. So I continued with the process. She worked alongside Hackensack University Medical Center. They have a partnership with the National Kidney Registry, the largest paired exchange organization in the world. What that means is that people who have potential living donors, but their donors don't match them uh, through the blood type or through cross matching, they can get hooked up, so to speak, with another pair of donors and recipient and sort of exchange kidneys. Gianna donated her kidney in December of 2020. It saved the life of a 37-year-old man in California, but it didn't stop there. Gianna's selfless act saved four lives. When there is a person who just wants to donate a kidney to anybody, uh, she can start a chain of transplants. So she gave a kidney to a lucky recipient that she never met, and then that recipient's donor gave to another pair in California, and another pair of people got transplanted in Florida, and a kidney from Florida then flew back to California. So that's a whole chain of four transplants. Donating a kidney to a stranger is so rare. Hospitals only see it about 300 times per year. They get no benefit from that donation. Uh, it's just they're good, fantastic people. So we need more of those. And a fantastic person Gianna is, so much so that she wrote a letter to her recipient thanking him for helping her fulfill her dream of carrying on her father's legacy. Thank you for receiving my kidney. It has truly changed my life. Although you may consider it a gift, it's a gift to me too. You made my dream come true. Imagine giving up your greatest source of income to stand up for what you believe in. I'd rather pr pr prioritize kids' lives and well-being rather, rather than getting money for, for a, an event that we can pass. Well, that's exactly what Jersey City Girl Scout Troop 12026 is doing. 
Every year, Girl Scout troops across the country look forward to their annual cookie season. It's their biggest fundraiser of the year. Sales fund their annual membership fees and most of their activities. But this troop wants no part in the cookie sales. After their troop leader shared some troubling news she found in a newspaper article. It was on a girl from uh, Tennessee. Her name's Olivia Chafin, and she has a boycott on Girl Scout cookies because of the palm oil that's one of the ingredients in the cookies. And we got inspired by that. Olivia started a petition demanding that the Girl Scout organization use 100% sustainable palm oil, meaning that no ecosystems are destroyed in the production of the oil and that no child labor is used. She argues that because the cookie box has a label that reads mixed sustainable, it means only a portion of the palm oil used in the cookies is sourced ethically. We reached out to the National Girl Scouts organization for a response to these claims, and they provided this statement. We have confirmed that our bakers' palm oil suppliers have their own monitoring programs in place, focus on social and environmental aspects of palm oil production. In addition to aligning and auditing against Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil Principles and Criteria, which explicitly prohibit child labor, among other requirements related to workers' rights. Still, the troop leader says a recent investigation by the Associated Press left her troop determined to help solve the problem. I showed him a video from the Associated Press that shows a girl in Malaysia who's picking um, the fruits for the palm oil, and she's saying how she wants to go to school, but her mom says she can't because she has to work. So I said, after that video, do you still want to sell cookies? And <laughs> they said no. So basically, Samoa's is my favorite. Um, but just a few towns over, Isabella Fernandez, a member of a Bergen County Girl Scouts troop, is still selling her cookies, and so are the majority of troops across the state. I think it's great for them to exercise their freedom of thought. Um, at the same time, I stand behind Girl Scouts because they've been extremely transparent with the situation. Betty Garger, president and CEO of Girl Scouts of Northern New Jersey, says the organization is proud that the Jersey City troop is voicing their concerns, but that Girl Scouts USA is very careful when it comes to its use of palm oil. Obviously, Girl Scouts of the USA and Girl Scouts of Northern New Jersey, we are against child labor in any way, shape, or form, but we are part of the Roundtable for Sustainable Palm Oil, the RSPO, um, Girl Scouts of the USA, and our bakers, which really looks for ways to make sure that the palm oil used in all of the industry, the food industry, is safe, um, is not being used in standards that we're not um, that aren't to our highest standards here in, in Girl Scouts in the USA. She also adds that palm oil isn't just in Girl Scout cookies. Um, it's in makeup, it's in diesel fuel, it's in a lot of food ingredients. So it's, it's a food uh, industry standard that we have to be concerned about. And by being part of the RSPO, we're helping to solve that problem.